ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Hi, hi. Craig Ferguson. Please, 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 that's enough. Now, 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 fire up a color teeny, sit back, relax, and watch the pictures as they fly through the air. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. It's a sad, a sad day for those of us around here. Those of us in late night television lost one of our own this weekend. Uh, the great Tom Snyder, who uh, was the first host of this show, passed away at the age of 71. So our hearts go out to his family and friends. He'll be sadly missed. Later on in the show, we're gonna have a, a tribute to Tom, who was a broadcasting legend, and actually uh, someone that I, I, I watched very closely myself when I was trying to get this gig, because I thought, well, if he had it, then... Um, <laughs> and he started it off, I'll just, I'll copy what he did, and we should be good. <laughs> Those of you who's been watching this show for any amount of time will know that's what I did with a Scottish accent, but it's, it's all right. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, it's a sad day for us. It is. A, it's a good day for uh, a good day for well, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There you are. It's his birthday. <laughs> no, it is. It's it's Arnold's birthday. He's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger turns 60 today. Uh, he looks great for his age. Do we have a picture of him? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Wow. Blew my tie sideways. That was so funny. <laughs> You know, there's another celebrity birthday today. Hilary Swank is 33 today. Now, isn't that weird? Hilary Swank and Arnold Schwarzenegger have the same birthday? That, 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 they couldn't be more different. One is a he-man with rippling muscles and bulges everywhere, and the other one's the governor of California. So, how could they be more different? <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's a great week for America as well. It's Shark Week! Oh, yeah! Shark Week! Yeah! Oh, you thought I forgot. I didn't forget. Do we have a graphic for Shark Week? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, not on CBS. Yeah, not on CBS. Shark Week, of course, is a great, a great week in American television. It's on another network, so I'm not allowed to tell you the name of that network. But it's not a hard discovery to make <laughs> because it's on the discovery channel there oh, oh they're gonna fire me uh, you did it get out <laughs> anyway that was me go you see why i gave up the act and <laughs> did you do crying <laughs> that just looks like you've eaten something <laughs> anyway tonight on shark week this is, I'm very excited. Tonight on Shark Week, a nurse shark, dangerous shark, a nurse shark attacks a whole school of fish. Nothing compared to what was on CBS, of course. Tonight on CBS, two and a half men, uh, Charlie Sheen attacks a whole school of nurses. <laughs> so, CBS wins again. <laughs> Not really, but I'm trying to keep my job after doing that little thing. <laughs> I had a good weekend this weekend. You know where I went? I went to Toronto in Canada. Yeah, it's in Canada. I went to Toronto. <laughs> Uh, the, they have the, the, the festival, the Just for Laughs festival. It's a big festival in Canada. They usually have it in Montreal. And they did have it in Montreal. Uh, but they had an extra bit in Toronto, and I went to that. Now, the first time I ever appeared, did stand-up comedy in the North American continent, got to be careful, was, uh, was in Canada at that festival 20 years ago. And I don't really remember it. You know, it was like, well... <laughs> Anyway, it was nice to go back and see Toronto. I, like, I love Toronto. Peter Ustinov used to say that Toronto was like New York run by the Swiss, which I think is unfair. <laughs> unfair to Toronto, because the Swiss are bastards. I mean, they, no, they are. They are with their cheese and their cuckoo clocks and their little army knives. No wonder they're neutral. Who are you going to scare with that little knife? <laughs> come here, come here. We will open up your bottles of wine and give you manicures until you beg for mercy. <laughs> We will convenience you to death. <laughs> Toronto, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, Toronto. Toronto is a great city. It's very cosmopolitan. Every type of restaurant you could think of right there. Because I used to think of Canadian cuisine as, this, you know, bacon and syrup. And that's fi I'm fine with that. 
but it was yeah i went to the, they've got everything and i went to this amazing sushi restaurant really very very good sushi covered in syrup and a little bit of bacon on the side. <laughs> Now you gotta love Canada. <laughs> and I was staying at this great hotel. It was called the Germain Hotel. Mm. Yeah, and but the hotel was mobbed with people there for the festival. So I signed under a name that no one would recognise. You know, Craig Ferguson. That, <laughs> <laughs> that tends to keep the people up. You know, when you travel as much as I do, you learn these little hotel <laughs> tricks, you know. Uh, always use a discreet name, always leave a space in your bag so you can steal the hotel bathrobe. <laughs> When the porn shows up on your bill, deny, deny, deny. <laughs> Always deny. Yes. So, anyway, I'm in Toronto and I, I saw this. I'm not kidding you. I saw this show. It was fantastic. Here's what it's called. I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. It was called Evil Dead the Musical. <laughs> Zombie. Bees that sing and dance like it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was like the musical hairspray, but for straight men. <laughs> Do you know? Have you? By the way, have you seen that poster for the the hairspray movie? Did you got a picture of that poster? Look at that. That's Travolta. <laughs> yeah. Now that's John Travolta. He's in a big dress, fifteen pounds of makeup. Have you ever seen him look happier in his damn life? <laughs> Just living the dream. <laughs> anyway, musical theatre's not really my thing. I don't go that often. You know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's about it. Anyway. <laughs> well, I remember watching the musical Cats and thinking, this is awful. I wish all these characters would die. <laughs> <laughs> it's America. I'm allowed to say what I think. <laughs> well, in Evil Dead, the musical, right, all the characters die in the first ten minutes. And then it gets messy. You haven't lived until you've seen a zombie do jazz hands. It's fantastic. <laughs> With somebody else's hands. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think a lot of musical theatre would be improved by adding zombies. Uh, Oklahoma, where the wind goes. <laughs> anyway, Evil Dead, Evil Dead the musical, there's so much zombie blood flying around. They've got this warning before the show starts. If you're sitting in the first three rows, you're going to be covered in blood. So, of course, in the first row, covered in blood. <laughs> I was only there for the weekend. That was the only clothes I had. It was a... <laughs> and it's very tricky getting back through customs. You've only been out of the... <laughs> You've been out of the country for 48 hours, and you come back and your clothes are covered in blood. <laughs> Nothing says... Hitman, like that. <laughs> so I had to go to an even, an even more scary place, a scarier place than Evil Dead the Musical. I went to The Gap. <laughs> or as they call it in Canada, Le Gap. You know, they're very <laughs> bilingual, bi-curious, something. They do that. <laughs> and it's very I don't like going to the hip clothing stores because all the clerks are very young. All the people that work there are very young. They look at me like, what do you need new clothes for? <laughs> Nobody cares what you wear, Grandpa. <laughs> Nobody's gonna sleep with you. Why are you buying clothes? <laughs> and I, you know, I'm one of these guys that doesn't care much about what I wear, obviously, you know. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you reach a certain age when you're a guy and you think, well, these are just gonna have to last me for the rest of my life. That's... <laughs> We're wearing these for the next 40 years. <laughs> All right, we gotta go. We're, we're right back. We've got a great show. Drew Carey is here. <laughs> Megalyn Ichikawoki is here. We'll be right back. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Corona. Kick back and relax with an ice cold Corona. Naughty, naughty monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. I thought I was going to press the monkey button and I pressed the baboon button. <laughs> I 
I feel such a fool. <laughs> People at home going, hey, wait, that was, that was a baboon. That wasn't a monkey. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> no, this is the, the, the monkey button. The monkey button's here. <laughs> That's the monkey button. The baboon button. <laughs> you see my dilemma. <laughs> you know there's people out there already going, oh, well, neither one of those was a baboon, actually. <laughs> However, I digress. You know, I, I, I told you I was up in Canada at the weekend. I, lo I love Canada. I really do. They've got this, the two languages going on there, the English and uh, Canadian, and they, uh, <laughs> they got the English and the French, which I think is fantastic. In Los Angeles, we, we want to get the one language, Spanish, and I think we should move up. <laughs> be nice if we did more. <laughs> hey, I'm an immigrant. Well, I'm an immigrant too, but... Well, <laughs> well, all right then. I am... <laughs> you know, I saw... <laughs> I saw, I saw some great comedians up there in Canada. You, uh, you, it's guys that I haven't seen for a long time. Guys like Richard Lewis and Dom Herrera, and you think, God, no wonder these guys are still working. They're sensational. And I, I see this new guy I hadn't seen before. He's been around for a while, Canadian guy, Russell Peters, who was just a, a spectacular. He plays to these huge crowds. You might see him. And a guy called Joe Coy. Now, I, I'd never heard of Joe Coy before. I watched this guy. This is like a, a, a young... Uh, uh, he, like a young Chris Rock, that's like his energy. Amazing, an amazing performer. You, you gotta see him. Uh, actually, I was a bit jealous. <laughs> and guess what, when I came home la last night, I, I was outside last night, I stood on a bee. <laughs> and it stung me. <laughs> I know, and it died. And it, like, well, that's, the, the bee's defense mechanism, it stings you and then it dies. Which I think, as a defense mechanism, that's kind of flawed. <laughs> who, who wins here? I mean, I go into the bathroom, put some cream on and go, oh, oh, like that. And you're off. <laughs> Take that, B. <laughs> Mind you, he might have died because I stood on him. <laughs> I don't know if that was it. You know, if a 150 pound man stands on you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well. Hey, do you know what? I saw a very interesting thing in the news. Uh, look at this. Well, let's start this morning, though, with the story of Don Frick out of Wayne County, Pennsylvania. Pictures of Don this morning will tell you that he is just fine, but these are his pants. Don Frick was struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told his wife. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, my naughty monkeys. <laughs> I had to whip the monkey, for he was pretending to be a baboon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, at least I keep myself amused. That's amazing. <laughs> now, listen, a lot of people don't know this, but Prince Charles, he's not only the Prince of Wales, he's also the king of late-night television in the UK. Take a look at this clip from Prince Charles' BBC Late Night Show. Look at this. From Buckingham Palace, it's the rather late program with Prince Charles. Brought to you by Prince Charles Family Jewels. Please don't laugh when I say that. Ladies and gentlemen, the King of Late Night. Welcome to London. Welcome to the rather late programme. I'm your host, TB's Prince Charles. All right. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, hey, I tell you what, my wife Camilla finally finished the Harry Potter book. <laughs> now, she would have finished sooner, but she has to turn the pages with her hooves. <laughs> what? What? Hooves. <laughs> hey, you know, here in England, right here in England, look, it's England, see it? Here in England, there's been terrible flooding. It was so bad, we evacuated the stables and we let Camilla sleep in the house. <laughs> hey, 
you know, over in America, this isn't America, this is England, but over in America, <laughs> in America, President, President, Vice President, the Vice President Cheney, American President, Vice, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> America, yeah. The American Vice President Cheney, he had an operation this weekend, and for a very brief time during the procedure, President Bush actually ran the country. <laughs> All right, let's ascend to the throne, Joe. <laughs> <Bubba, bubba. laughs> Hello, dearie. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> Sparkly. He's such a tease. I said, you're such a tease. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, if I look in there, I can see your future. <laughs> You've attracted the attention of your boss. <laughs> What's a joke? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> All right, that's enough. <clears throat> anyway, do we have time for a parchment? Do we? Oh, yeah, come on, then. Let's do a parchment. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, this is uh, from Mr. Mr. Adrian Williams of Dorchester. He writes, Dear Prince Charles, have you ever found anything weird in your ears? You know. <laughs> you know I have. I once reached into my left ear and found more ear. <laughs> Same with the right ear. Also, once in my right ear, I found a badger. <laughs> now it's time for one of my favourite segments, Prince Walking. Prince Walking. Excuse me, overweight, balding woman. Um, what do you call this dance? Um, terrible. <laughs> Sick of this. <laughs> is that the sheep of time? Oh, uh, well, we're out of time. Join me tomorrow when my guest will be the most beautiful woman in Hollywood, David Beckham. All right, see you tomorrow. Filthy pigeons. <laughs> uh, my first guest tonight is a young comedian. He's starting out in show business. Uh, he, he's struggling a bit, so we thought we'd have him on the show. He's hosting a new game show uh, called The Power of Ten for CBS, and some other show as well. Uh, take a look at it. <laughs> Please welcome the newcomer that is Drew Carey. We gotta get a show for uh, Ryan and Dietrich and Kathy. Yeah, you know that'd be a good idea, actually. We can, we'll... all, tell, we can all tell Hollywood to kiss it collectively. <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of did, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, 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 we did that for a while. Yes, my friend, we did indeed. How are you doing? I heard you got a new job. Yeah, I'm a host of Price is Right. Well, how about that? <laughs> 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 weird, that is weird. You go, you're going to be just down there. I'll, I'll be. I'll, we can hang out, have little picnics together. Yeah, go see some soccer. <laughs> you're you're going crazy for soccer now, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I love it. I go. Yeah. I have a luxury box at the Home Depot Center down in Carson for the Galaxy. Yeah. I go. I go all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but what can, constitutes luxury at the uh, at the? <laughs> there, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, and that's why I'm doing this job. <laughs> what uh, is luxury? They give you like a fruit plate. And, a fruit uh, plate? Come on, man. Yeah. You eating fruit? You've got Hollywood, man. You've got Hollywood. It used to be about the comedy. Yeah, it used to be about the fried cheese. You know what? 
<laughs> Did you, have you gone all Hollywood? I mean, you know, have you? No. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you were. Ah, you were going Hollywood. I saw Hollywood people talk to you. Yeah, yeah. no, it's like. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I really, I love your work. I have no idea who you are. <laughs> you were great in that movie. <laughs> The best, uh, the best, like Hollywood joke ever. Everybody told me they they ask you who your agency is, and they like, who are you with, and you go Gersh, and then they go, Psh, ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it, 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 Gersh. Yeah. No, no, no. It's... Hey, have you been back to Cleveland recently? I went back there. I was I was there about six months ago. As a matter of fact, uh, August twelfth, I think, is Drew Carey one dollar hot dog day at uh, <laughs> Cleveland Stadium. And so was... they're putting the prices up because you're going yeah, there or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to go back there for Drew Carey $1 hot dog day, yeah. but I have prices right now. And then I was back for uh, LeBron and the, uh, the last game of the, of the, that the Cavs had when they lost to the Spurs. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the Cavs have been waiting to get to the NBA Finals forever, and it was the last game when we were losing by four and by five, by four and by five, back and forth. But the guy behind me in the section had $50,000... On the Cavs plus three. Oh, jeez. So we were like, like edge of our seats. Yeah. At the end of the game, and at the at the buzzer, as the Spurs were hugging in the mid, in mid court, one of the Cavs, I don't even know his name, made some junk three pointer. So the Cavs only lost by one. So the whole arena, all of Cleveland, is going, ah, well. And there was about twenty of us going, woo. <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, I have to say, there's one point of accuracy in the in the story when you said the whole of Cleveland went, oh well. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cleveland. Nobody went, oh, well, for the years. Darn it, we'll get them next year. Oh, time. darn. Well, there's always next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really like out there. I told you that I think that's the most uh, like my hometown I've come across it's in America. Like, it's a lot like Glasgow. It is, isn't it? Yeah. But the, the, the teams, and now you're into soccer, maybe you should go and live in, in Scotland. And I've have... been, you know, I've been to Glasgow. It's just really so similar, the attitude of the people. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Working class, don't take any nonsense. You know, I don't want to, don't get highfalutin on us. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, and when they lose a big sporting event, they go, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Ranger lost today. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> now, what about the prices, right? Have you have you been talking to Barker yet? Is he, you know, I talked to him on the he, phone. I'm know. supposed to have lunch with him. I'm supposed to have lunch with him this week. I talked to him on the phone, but it was Entertainment Tonight was on the other end. Uh. So it was like, hey, Drew, it's Bob Barker with Entertainment Tonight. And I was like, okay. So I, 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 it wasn't like a genuine conversation conversation, but uh, I told him I was going to keep saying uh, spay new to your pets. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Don't forget to spay new to your pets. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you're back in the building, I can't tell you. You know, I got two shows. Can you believe it? A two big, shows at CBS. Big, just think how fast it's all going to come tumbling down when I get caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> I was uh, driving in L.A., and the bus comes pulls up beside me with the poster for the Bratz movie. Right. And when I, I, was, I looked over here, and I went, hey, hey. Then I saw what it was for, and I went, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I saw the, the poster for the Bratz movie, and I mean, these girls are all in their 40s in real life, though, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they're in their 20s in real life. Well, yeah. I, I think a little more than that. I, mean, I, actually, I actually, before I decided to do that joke on national TV, I looked at their ages on Wikipedia. All right. <laughs> That's what you've always been very meticulous in your research. Oh, uh, no. I was just doing it for research. Is all was. Hey, what about... What about... <laughs> That's right, people following your email stuff. Are, yeah, and Kerry's on Wikipedia, what the hell? <laughs> hey, what about uh, changing the format? Are you going to do it into the no, show? No, the show's going to be exactly the same. Uh, they sp uh, spruced up the set a little bit. It's right, the same well, colors, same logos, pretty much the same. I'm going to see it all on Thursday for the very first time. What about the girls, Drew, the girls? <laughs> The mo Price is Right models? Yeah. yeah Barker's gonna... Beauties, what are you going to do? Uh, they're going to be called the, the Price is Right Girls. We're not going to... Carrie's Cuties, I no, say. No, 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 no. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, it's got two Cs right there. Have... <laughs> yeah, I would love to have their... Uh... I'd like to have their own individual fame instead of having to be like Carrie's Cuties. Oh, and that never bothered you when I worked for you, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the Drew Carey and sometimes Craig Ferguson is on it show. It wasn't called that. No. No, but, you know, I don't care. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's women are not I did call you, uh, yeah. Carrie's boss. Well, yes, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, Carrie's boss. That's what you called me. <laughs> Through Carrie's boss. <laughs> Do you remember? 
Do you remember like Kevin Pollack did it for the first year? Yeah, yeah. And then in the second never, year, you never saw him. You never saw him. And then they hired me to do the second year. And Drew Carey said uh, Kevin Pollock uh, got pretty expensive. We got a cheaper English guy. Do you remember that? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was fun. I do you miss it. I miss it sometimes a little bit. Yeah, look, I, I miss hanging out with ever the people. Yeah. That's yeah. what I Everybody was so much fun to hang out with him. And that vacation, we took a vacation. This is, uh, he hates when, when you do anything, say anything nice about him. But the, Bruce Drew, Helford paid for half of it. Bruce Helford, <laughs> Andrew paid for and this Bruce never enormous... Got in, no, I always credit him for the half of okay. it as well. This enormous... They, they rented a giant <laughs> ship and we sailed around the Caribbean. No one else on it but people that worked on the Drew Carey show. It was about 100, 120, 130 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, it was... And they paid for everything. It must have cost, like... North a of a million dollars, it right? It was a lot. They like they rented a plane to fly down, like a big proper plane didn't with tell like seats and everything. Didn't tell anybody. <laughs> didn't tell anybody where we were going. No, you kept saying we were going to Utah or something like that, and, <laughs> which no, would have been fine. But you know, it was the best thing. I hope I, oh, I hope I have time to tell this. Best thing was like, uh, I nobody knew where we were going. It was a secret vacation. I just told them to bring a passport and to show up at a certain That's day right, and wear, yeah, bring yeah. warm clothes. So uh, I was at. Uh, a, a restaurant not far from Warner Brothers, and I saw a friend of mine who was going on the cruise. I go, hey, man, nice to see you. And I, I come up to him and say, hey, I'm so glad you're here on this special day. And I gave him a big hug, and I go, this is going to be the greatest day of your life. And then everybody I saw on the lot was like, I gave him a big hug. Like, this is a really special day for all of us. And I'm real excited. <laughs> so we got on the bus. We're supposed to go and get the plane. And we, instead of getting on the, going anywhere, we, the bus went straight to Sheraton Universal, which is right by here, or right by Warner Brothers. Sheraton Universal. And I had set up a conference, a fake conference, and I got on the bus, and I never was a better actor in my life, and I said, uh, I said, folks, uh, we really are going on vacation, but first, I took this seminar back in January that really changed my life. <laughs> I go, it's going to be the greatest. And I was like near tears about how yeah, much it's going to be. It was horrible. And uh, I got off the bus, and people on the bus were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is the worst. And then they got off, and after uh, Craig was one of the first ones to find it, he opened the, they had to go give their names and get a pamp uh, package, <laughs> open up the envelope, another envelope inside. And then there was a note that says it was a joke, get back on the bus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, before it happened, Ryan Stiles went like that, and he went, he hasn't chased his January. He's been a miserable bastard all year. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. My 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 next guest tonight is a young actress. She stars in the 4400, which airs on Sundays at nine on the USA Network. Take a look. Please welcome Megalyn Achikawoke, everybody. <laughs> Megalyn! Megalyn! Welcome! Welcome to our show. You look Thank sensational. You, you look Thank very, you. very nice indeed. Did I say your name properly? Say it again. Let me hear it. Megalyn Achikawoke. One more time, say it again. Megalina Chikawoki. Yes. I did? Yeah. What was the difference between the first time and the second time? I, said? I just wanted to hear you say it. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does anyone ever say that a cheeky wokey sometimes sounds like a cheeky monkey? I sometimes say that yeah. to myself. I say, I say, think a chicken walking across, like, across the oh, street. Oh, yeah. A chicken walking. Or a chicken walking. Walk. A chicken walk. Bless yeah. you. <laughs> Do you, uh, is it an African name? Yeah. It's oh, Nigerian. that's nice. Wait, are you, are you from Africa? My father's Nigerian. Your father's Nigerian, and yeah. your mother is American? Yeah. Right, right. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Arizona. Really? Yeah. Do on the Navajo Reservation in northeastern Arizona. I've never been there to the Navajo Reservation in eastern Arizona. <laughs> really? Yeah, which, which, actually, I, you know what? I've never been to any Indian I've been The only time I've been uh, on a reservation has been to a casino. <laughs> but I've never... No, it's true. I don't know what a reservation is like. I don't, what, what is it like on a reservation these days? Um, well, it's like, you know, any other city. It's, you know, they don't live in teepees. Right, right, right. You probably thought that. I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they don't live in teepees. It's, you know, it's just, just regular. Just like a regular, it's like, like a regular time. I mean, I lived, where I lived was very, really remote. So right. we didn't have movie theaters or malls or anything. Do you ever go into a restaurant? <laughs> When you ever go, like, when you go to a restaurant and they say, do you have a reservation, do you get all offended and everything like that? <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it could annoy I me. I try to play it off. 
Yeah, yeah, but you can. Oh, yeah. 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 How are you? How are you doing in this uh, this great teeming metropolis of Los Angeles here? Can you see your house from here? Yeah, a lot of people I, can. There. Yeah. Yes. There. You're pretty like high right there. now, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Do you, do you like living here? Is it, is it a fun town for you? I love it. I actually, like you, were just in Vancouver. I mean, you were in Toronto, but I was in Vancouver. Did you like Vancouver? Yeah, it's a great city. It yeah. rains. Oh. It rains a lot in Vancouver. It it's, does. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. God. But besides that, it's a great city. Yeah. What were you doing in Vancouver? Shooting the show? Shooting 40... the show, yeah. We just finished. What so. is that about the 4400? What's it about? Yeah. Um, well, it's about 4,400 people who were abducted over the course of 60 years and sent back to Earth from the future. Wow. With powers to save humanity in the future. Oh, what special powers do you have then? Gorgeous. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. Because it's working here. Um, thank you. <laughs> it's, I'm, just, I'm just reporting. <laughs> Limitless abilities, my really? character, yeah. yeah. Limitless abilities? Yeah. That sounds like a little bit of a cop-out conception. <laughs> you know, it's like like every week they can just add another power to you. Yeah. yeah. They sort of just used me to achieve whatever sort of storyline they wanted to. Oh, she can see through you. She can see what you're thinking. She can set you on fire. She can really? turn you and set. Yeah, I can do really think, do everything. Do you think, can, you, can you see through me? Could you, for example, read my mind? <laughs> yes. If I wanted to. You may want to slap me now, then. <laughs> There's a joke, there's a joke. Do you like... So you, 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 live, you live here and you, you've embraced the California lifestyle, then. You, do you enjoy surfing and uh, hanging around with... Uh, yeah. Do you really? Do you go surfing? Well, I live in Venice, so, right. you know, there's, like, surf, skate culture that's big Yeah, there, no, so. it gets quite busy down there. There's a lot of tourists down there in Venice and all that. You, yeah, yeah, a well, lot. Yeah. But actually, it's, it's sort of nice, because... It adds a lot of care. Well, I live really close to the boardwalk, so I, it's got a nice energy. I'm just an address I'm looking for, basically. <laughs> nah, okay. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. It's a joke. It's a joke. I probably should have said that. No, no. No, don't do that. Somebody might watch this show one night. <laughs> I know. I know. Man would be in I didn't trouble. Think of that. No, I didn't you got to think, think it watch. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Listen, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. And help me say your name properly at the end so I can say again. Megalyn. Echikawake. 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 Megalyn Echikawake, everybody. We'll be right back. If you're going to be in the L.A. area and would like to attend the taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 213-833-6469 or visit us on our website at www.cbs.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Now, I, I mentioned uh, at the top of the show that uh, over the weekend we lost uh, the great Tom Snyder who uh, was the first host uh, of this show, uh, and a man who I personally feel developed a real conversational style, which I, I could only hope to try and emulate. Um, he, a, a, a truly magnificent broadcaster. And we, we've put together a little tribute uh, for you guys to see, a, a look at the many sides of Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder, everybody. Settle back, fire up a color teeny, and watch the pictures as they fly through the air. Thanks for diving us up, everybody. I don't have to tell you, it's great fun spending other people's money. The first time I went to New York for NBC was in 1972, and uh, there was a fellow over there at Burbank at NBC named Sid Graw, great guy who was in charge of the money. And he came to me, he said, Tom, we'd like you to go to New York for a week and do the news on the Today Show. Frank Blair is going to be on vacation. And how much expense money would you think you would have to have to go in there and, you know, cover yourself? I said, well, Sid, what do you normally give the guys and gals who go in there? And he said, uh, 500. I said, geez, I said, I, uh, I don't think 500 is going to cover it. He said, well, what would you need? I said, uh, 2,500. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he said, OK. And they gave me 2,500. Uh, $2, I spent every quarter of it and more. <laughs> 
Cassie Mackin was still living then, God rest her soul, the legendary NBC News correspondent in Washington. I took her to dinner a couple of nights, and I mean, we had flowers, and we had the rides in the Hanson cab, but not just Cassie Mackin, but other people as well, the boys and girls of NBC News. And I spent all the money. And I got back to Burbank, and about a month later, Sid came in my office. He says, you know, he said, uh, we're going to have to settle up your expense account for the, uh, for the New York trip, the 2500 I said, oh, gee, Sid, I forgot to tell you. I was robbed when I was in New York. <laughs> he said, did they take the money? I said, no, no, they took the receipts. <laughs> By the way, we just brought this uh, from downtown. This is tomorrow morning's uh, edition of the Los Angeles Times. Car bomb shreds federal building in Oklahoma City. Like all of you in this truly incredible day in America, like all of you, we awakened here this morning and turned on the television set and were absolutely horrified at the pictures coming out of Oklahoma City today and the bombing there that has killed many, many people, including many, many children. And the first thoughts that, 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 that you have are you would expect this sort of thing, uh, ironically, in New York City, which is a city on the Atlantic Ocean, an international marketplace, and people with uh, uh, gripes uh, would attack a place in New York as they did the World Trade Center some years ago, or Los Angeles on the Pacific Rim here. But, I mean, this is Oklahoma. This is where the wind comes waving down the plain, and this is uh, the Surrey with the fringe on top, and, oh, what a beautiful morning, and people will say we're in love, and this isn't what you expect. This isn't, uh, this isn't acceptable in Oklahoma. So here, uh, over the past four years, are people and Tom in situations that no other host would ever show because they're so embarrassing. Take a look. Now, the movie on the airplane, which is where I started here, was the picture that he, he just made now with Helen Hunt, and he got the Best Actor Award uh, as hard as it gets, as good as it gets. Excuse me. <laughs> as, as, no, no, as good as it, come on, it slipped out. Come on. Now we have such a sweet and wonderful relationship. We are with Nora Dern, who's, or Laura Dern, who's... <laughs> I like Nora better, <laughs> Fine. actually. I'm glad you do. <laughs> or Lorna Doom. You could try, too. It's just <laughs> Now, the bad song book, and we're with Chuck Berry, my friends, came from a... a, 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 a uh, excuse me. <laughs> Dave Berry, my friends. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Let me ask you here about the high visibility that you and your husband, Tom Shanks, uh, have to endure. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I bring How this up... How do you know about his shank? <laughs> I beg your pardon? What? Huh? What, what did I say? Tom Shanks. Oh, Tom Hank. I'm sorry. <laughs> Reading about you this afternoon, you grew up both in Southern California and in Paris. Well, actually, no. My mother grew up in Paris. Like I said, you grew up in Southern California. <laughs> Now, your mom was a journalist, as I read. She, uh, she worked for a time for Vanity Fair magazine, right? Um, well, she actually worked for Harper's Bazaar. Harper's Bazaar. Yes, yeah, she was... <laughs> We're going to work this out, I'm sure. I doubt it. <laughs> uh, keep in mind, never, pet, uh, never sweat petty things and don't... Never sweat petty things and don't pet sweaty things. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Get off of me. <laughs> And finally, may I thank you who have watched me and listened to me on radio and television for over 25 years in this country. Uh, you're great people to work for in this time period because you get it and because you understand it and because your, uh, your, your curiosity and your interest in things uh, surpass those of people who watch in other day parts. I am convinced of that. You know, you and I didn't get the greatest time period in the world. We got stuck with 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we don't get as big a crowd as they generate at 9 o'clock at night or at 11.30. Uh, in my particular case, we haven't won this time period against the competition in the four years plus I've been here. But I think we've had a wonderful time together uh, having fun and learning things about ourselves and about the world. Good night, everybody. I got a call about a crop circle in the shape of the Mercury Insurance M. This should prove beyond any doubt that Mercury's low rates are the work of aliens from the planet Mercury. How'd that get there? Clever Mercurians.